Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here with Bish's RV, uh, you know, getting blinded by the light like Bruce Springsteen over here, and that's kind of what we're talking about. When you're out there camping, but the sun's just screaming down, I've got a couple low to no budget tips that can help you beat the summer heat, and if you appreciate little tips like this to help you enjoy your camping experience more than just trying to sell you your next camper, hit that subscribe button, let's get dove in here. So sometimes you want to kind of get ahead of the game here, and when you first walk in the door, when you first get to your campsite and you're first setting up, one of the things you can do to kind of start stacking the odds in your favor is open up all the cabinetry for a few minutes. This is a little trick uh, I learned from my grandfather when I was about knee high to a grasshopper. And uh, every time we would get to a campsite, every time I would go camping with him, he'd always, as soon as he got to inside the RV, he'd open up all his cabinetry. And uh, finally one day I'm like, Grandpa, why are you doing that? He said, basically because these things are like little miniature ovens. And if you think about it, it's basically like a big wood box. It's just sitting there holding all kinds of heat. And uh, if you can get that heat out of there, and if you open a window or some cross breeze or like a ceiling fan, you help exhaust that first wave of heat, you're not fighting against the tide quite so much. And again, zero dollar thing that can help you kind of get a jump start on the day. And don't forget, up in the bedroom, that's where you've got the biggest blast furnace located. Make sure you get those things aired out and breezed out a little bit. Now, ironically, one of the biggest factors you're working against is one of the things you probably like the most about your RV, and that's those big, giant windows. So, uh, like, those windows are, generally speaking, like an R0.7, not even an R value of 1. And even a dual pane window in RVs, unless it's like those Lexan Euro style dual panes, even those things are only like an R1.1. They, they, they're barely an R value of 1. That's why I don't call them thermal pane windows, I call them dual pane windows. They don't have uh, an empty pocket gas charge between those two panes of windows. They're just literally two panes of glass that are like glued and bonded together. It's not like a household thermal pane. Anyway, these things right here, they're awesome. You get to enjoy your campsite and whatnot, but if it's screaming hot, you've got to do something about those. And again, this video really focused on low to no budget solutions. Literally, just pulling the shade on that window will turn it from an R0.7 that we just talked about to a roughly like an R2.1. So for $0, you're actually getting greater thermal benefit here as compared to those very expensive dual pane, uh, thermal pane RV windows that uh, you know people talk about all the time. Those dual pane windows are very nice for drowning out exterior noise. They do not significantly increase the R value of RV. And simply pulling the shade down on this can get you a greater benefit and help keep the sunshine out and the cold in. Because effectively, you're creating what I call a poor man's thermal pane, or maybe just a smart man's thermal pane, or ladies, or hot pockets, however you identify, I don't know. But you're creating a, a pocket of poor air interchange and you're dual layering this. It, it just, it ends up creating a, uh, a, a much easier time for your air conditioner to be able to keep up with everything. And then for a little bit of the old razzle dazzle, go get you some of the silver stuff. Some, uh, the off, name often applied to this is Reflectix, but uh, the, the reflective foil stuff, you can cut it to size uh, to, to kind of fit in your window slots. You can put it on the window and draw the shade to create like a one, two, three step benefit here. And this stuff isn't actually insulation. This technically has an R value of zero, although the, the dual sided version of this that I'm looking at actually does technically have an R value of one, but um, not, not a lot. What's happening here though is it's like, if you've ever put tin foil on like the heat registers of a house to help direct airflow or something like that, that's basically what this is going to do. It's going to reflect more of the sunlight out of the RV and make it harder for the cold air from the air conditioner to get out of the RV. Now, um, ironically, uh, this one kind of shaped like a, a foot over here. This is a piece that I used as a demo uh, talking about R values. Like this stuff is sometimes called like an R38 equivalent. Absolutely not, and if you do something like this, I can absolutely prove that to you. This is a little experiment you can do at home. Basically, cut some of this out to the shape of your foot, stuff it in your shoes like a pair of odor eaters, and for like the first five minutes, your feet are gonna be sweating. But once the stuff is compressed down and there's no more air pocket interchange, heat can just naturally transfer right through it, and it stops working, basically. It's a reflective item. It's not insulation. It does not have actual R value. There have actually been lawsuits that have been lost in Florida from people who are advertising this stuff as high as R100 to put in people's roofs for all kinds of money when basically they were just slathering tinfoil against somebody's ceiling. So this stuff does have benefit, but not 
exclusively on its own. It needs to be used in conjunction with something else and there needs to be an air pocket on both sides of it that it can help slow the exchange of heat between those things. Now, similar to the conversation we had about windows, these ceiling vents that you find in places like bathrooms and kitchens and whatnot, it's literally a hole in the roof. I, it, that's not even an exaggeration. They've cut a bypass channel to allow for light and airflow at the expense of zero insulation quality in that space right there. Thankfully, you could DIY something for very little money, just anything to help cover that gap. Anything is better than nothing. But um, a, uh, they, they make these very inexpensive like square foam type pillows that uh, often sometimes have like a reflective foil backer, kind of like we saw for that window stuff intentionally designed to stuff right up and stay up in those things. I see those things come in on trade. There's some people who will uh, get those things and shove them up in there and never bother touching them uh, again. Um, now, similarly for things like bathroom skylights, the same kind of logic here can apply, but because these are usually rounded in the shape of them, it's very difficult to find like a pillow that you can stuff up into these things. Most of these aren't going to have that option. However, there are um, where I've seen people like add little hooks and just put like a drape across this or something like that. Um, there are also little, almost like, you know how you roll your awning out on your RV? There's these little like roller blinds that you can hook up and unhook and retract so you don't got to take something up and down every single time. There are some solutions to spaces like this. Bathroom skylights, though, in my experience, are a little bit trickier to deal with because in many RVs, you're really depending on them to have enough headroom in the shower. Now, this is obviously not an, this is one with a tall shower that I don't have to do that. But in a lot of travel trailers, especially, you need the bubble space for a taller person to be able to stand up. But again, having something that you can hook up and unhook as you need, that can be a really handy thing to help keep a lot of heat out of this room right here. Now, this next tip applies mostly to travel trailers. I've actually done a separate video on it, so I'll try to be less wordy than normal. That's not easy for me. But if uh, you look at your air conditioner, if you see open pockets like this, uh, look to see if there's a, well, the technical term for it, I believe, is a um, flapper, you know? But uh, basically a way to, to shut off those open air vents. If you have a centralized air system and those are open, it's not actually pushing most of the air through the centralized air conditioning system. It's mostly just dropping in one spot. So like if you have a, a, a private bedroom, private bathroom, bunks on the opposite end of the RV or something like that, it's really struggling to get airflow effectively through the entire RV. And usually that's all it takes. Um, there's a lot of people that don't know about that feature. Again, it mostly app uh, applies to travel trailers. It can apply to fifth wheels, however, but that can help you provide more even cooling through the RV instead of only kind of zone cooling. All right, now this next thing over here. Ah! Ah! Cobwebs to the face! This next thing applies uh, mostly to, say, like older RVs, some that have been around the block a couple times. Check around your baggage drawers. Check all your weather stripping. Do you see how this is kind of loose over here? It's not actually making connection when you close the baggage door. It's not really providing a good seal, first of all. That's a good way to get a leak in an RV. Secondly, it's a good way to let the hot, cold air exchange in a way you don't want it to. Um, and I think anyone who's ever owned a home or an apartment or anything like that for a long enough time, if you've ever replaced a simple bit of weather stripping, have you noticed how it can sometimes have a huge effect on the heating and cooling of your RV? Now think of like where a baggage compartment is located, like directly under your bed. That could make or break the difference between a more comfortable camping experience and sleeping experience. Because if you don't sleep good, you ain't going to have a good time the rest of the day. Now this last tip is kind of like a last resort kind of thing um, and ignore the fact that we're in a building right now. Uh, basically this is where we wash our RVs so the fact that water is involved here made sense to me on this. If you're just struggling to keep up uh, against the sunshine, if it's a hotter day than the weather person ever imagined, as a last resort go outside and get like the hose that you have you know off the uh the spigot on the campsite or something like that and literally just briefly lightly spray down the outside of your rv and i got this idea actually by watching a nature documentary that described how kangaroos stay cool in the sun <laughs> and if you weren't familiar out there in the australian outback there's not exactly a lot of shade uh not a lot of cover and Animals just sit there under pure heat exposure, baking under the sun. Well, kangaroos often do this interesting thing where they will lick their arms. And if you look at them like under uh, a heat scope, their arms are way, way cooler than the rest of their body. By licking their arms when that saliva, when the water moisture content basically evaporates, it pulls with it a very high amount of heat content. 
Well, the same concept can kind of apply to your RV. If you're just like, man, I I'm cooking, I'm dying. Go outside, lightly spray down your RV through the, the hottest, heaviest sun exposure parts of the day, and that water will quickly evaporate and dissipate, and it'll give you like a little brief window, a little bit of respite where maybe the air system can start to fight back and keep up, and you might need to do it a couple times. Now, the thing is, when you do this, your RV is going to be spotty and look like crap on the outside, but at least you might be a little more comfortable on the inside. And again, it doesn't really cost you much. However, before you do that last one and just start spraying water all over the place, check in, uh, check on local ordinances or check in with the campground ownership, management, leadership, whatever the case may be. Make sure that that practice is okay. There are a lot of places that do not condone or permit you just to unnecessarily spray water on the ground. Maybe there's a water shortage, maybe there's erosion issues, all kinds of different things. Um, but if you wanna be a good neighbor like State Farm is there, ask permission, not forgiveness. Then again, I suppose one way you could kind of cheat the system is just like sit in your vehicle with the air conditioning on, but I think that kind of defeats the purpose. The idea behind this video was beating the heat inside your RV. So if you've enjoyed and found any benefit in our tips today, hit that like button and uh, subscribe if you haven't joined us previously. We put out all kinds of different tips, tricks, videos like this, news and industry insights, as well as a lot of RV reviews in case you're looking for your first one, your next one, or your last one. And until next time, thanks again for tuning in. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone. Thank you.